Okay, my friends, I think this is going to be as stimulating as stimulating can get. I am saying, and I have been saying, that light is electrons. And I think they knew this long ago. And these are those electrons. And let's see why I think this is extremely important. Good morning, my friends. Everybody that I know of knows what solar panels are. Now, what happens to a solar panel? Well, we collect electricity out of it. Why is electricity come out of it? Well, because something hits the panel and forces the electrons to flow out of it. What do you think hits the panel? Electrons. All right, so what is an electron? I say an electron exists right there. There's a tiny little electron crashing through all of this region of space where all these other electrons are just sitting around just enjoying life and this guy's flying through here just like a jet fighter creating that wake. Now, contrary to what any physicist will tell you, that is accelerated light. You just saw it and that is the particle that created this huge wake as it crashed through space which is occupied by all these other little particles. You see all these little, little dots? Those are free electrons. Plato called them ether. They are luminous corpuscles. What that means is they illuminate when somebody tries to force into their region, just like this guy. And they are all starting to concuss and illuminate. And then as it comes harder and harder and harder into the venturi, which is an accelerator, two drums, forcing this to compact and crush within it and accelerate. That's what an Venturi does. It's not something I'm making up. It's fully understood. And that's the acceleration. This is light accelerating. This is light as a particle. These are ether particles which exist. This is plasma over here, which is white Cheryankov radiation. That is solid electrons. Light is electrons. I came to the conclusion that, first of all, I thought light was not electrons. It couldn't be electrons. But now I have come to the conclusion it is electrons. It is, it's, they're negative particles. Now, I can't totally, totally understand that. But there is charge separation between the negative and then when they come back into positiveness. Now, I saw another experiment where a torus showed light being gathered into the magnetic lines of flux. I'm going to show you that right now. Before I show you that though, just consider this. We saw light coming from the sun. It hits solar panels. We get electrons out of it. That's what light is. It creates electrons. Heat is excess electrons. No question about it. When you force electricity into anything, it makes it heat and boil and sizzle and burn. It's forcing electrons into anything creates heat. Something is going to be heat created there. It may not be consequential in, in our realm, but in their realm, it's probably pretty damn hot. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to show you how light appears to be electrons because it will, it will flow literally through a wire. And I'll show you that. Okay, now I just did this video on do particles communicate because I think they might actually literally communicate. Now, let me see if I can find out. Right, here's the important part. Now, this was guy, a, a guy, um, Theonius Apollosis, I, I believe is the name of it. And um, he shows a lot of interesting um, visual effects and magnetism and things like that. Now, this is a torus inside it's it's a three-dimensional torus being shown inside of what they call a ferro cell a ferro cell which is nothing more than a bunch of like liquid oils and things and magnetic particles so there's plus and minus little bar magnets floating around in this they just sit around there and you don't see much of anything they turn the lights on and it just glows in here but then he puts a magnet underneath and it creates all these spiral patterns, which tells me that the light that is a polar molecule in my 
in my world, it's a, it's a light is an electron. It has a negative charge to it. That negative charge is flowing down the wires. This is literally creating wires. Those are wires. They're magnetic lines of flux. But the flux lines are going to polarize the particles and make them into plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus and make them into wires, literal wires. And then the wire appears to absorb the light. So to me, the wire is absorbing an electron and that electron is flowing through there just like it would through a wire in your your house. And uh, and he shows it twisting it all around and uh, going into 3D. See it here? Like, see it? It was a very cool uh, demonstration of how those magnetic lines of flux interact in a torus and absorb light. They are absorbing that light. I don't care what anybody says. That light is in here too. Why doesn't it glow like this over here? It's only glowing because it's in now in a wire. All right, so I'm saying light. See the light coming out of these little LEDs? I'm saying the light is literally electrons. Okay, so where am I going with this? We got electrons coming from the sun, which is light. It hits these solar panels. We collect the electrons from it. We know we are being flooded by electrons, so I decided we are being flooded, and I have created electron flood theory. The sun cascades electrons to us, which we know create, create electricity on Earth. They create heat. They are invading our atmosphere. Now, there's not enough, the, the Earth is a positive, attractive source. There's no question whatsoever. You put electricity next to Earth and bzzz, it goes right down to the Earth. Earth is a ground. Earth sucks electricity. Static collects on you, snap, it goes right to ground. Lightning, bzzz, it goes right to ground. A, a wire, bzzz, right to ground. This is a, pu a plus. We are a plus electric potential. The Earth. So what does that mean? All of these electrons say, oh, let's go to there. Let's go around that plus guy. And they all collect in our atmosphere, turning into heat and light. And all of the things we do, see and do, and all of the plants are being grown from this additional input of power. It's just nothing more than additional input of power. It's heat. It's light. It's electrons. It's electricity. So here we go. It starts filling up this layer here. What's this big red line out here? That's the ionosphere. Well, what does that mean, Roger? Well, the ionosphere is where the edge of our atmosphere is, and below that is the, all these particles, all these electrons, all these weather systems. That's nothing more than heat and electricity and electrons and particles and gases and so forth. Well, these particles, as we saw before in the light, there's all those little tiny ether particles are these particles. And they're just flooding in here. Sooner or later, they're going to fill up here so much that it no longer wants them. The Earth will say, you know, I'm plus, but man, you got, you, I can't take anymore. Now we're starting to equal out. At that point, they're going to discharge. And guess what? That's what they're doing right now. Yeah, now, don't forget, once you fill up these electrons in here, if you have too many, they have to go somewhere. And guess what? There's nothing around here significant to absorb those electrons. There's no other pluses that are close enough to us, to our ionosphere, to say, okay, we'll take those electrons. Where are they going to go? They're not just going to sit out here in space and just bubble away. They're going to discharge to somewhere. And somehow they are discharging out of here. They're called sprites and um, Steve's. Sprites come up, I believe they're coming from the surface of the Earth or somewhere within this range of atmosphere. And then they smash into the, to the top layer of the ionosphere and it cannot accept them anymore. So they some go up and then they filter back down because they're just flooding into a place that says, I got too many already. You came up here, I know you're trying to get out of here, but I don't want you. Right, it's pretty easy to see that the light is coming up from down here. It's smashing into this layer, which is the ionosphere, and it's trying to 
push through it and it really can't so it starts to fill this layer and that makes it glow because it's impacting into other just like light does and then some you can see them trying to push their way up through but it says I got too much go away and they go fall back to earth now there's there's a lot of these pictures coming in now now right, let's start down here it's coming up from here the sprite now what happens when it hits up above you can see it's, it's so completely obvious the impact originally is here boom 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 straight up same 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 they're coming up from below whether it's from within the earth I don't think so but it's close to the earth which is just too many electrons there is no other way to see this they are going up impacting this layer says I cannot accept you you will have to go and they trickle back to, to earth because there's just nowhere for them to go there's nobody out there that says I want electrons so they are stuck in our atmosphere and it is warming our atmosphere. There is no other way to look at it. And I will show you some other evidence that I think might help support this. Okay, I'm going to try to explain to you why they think global warming is strictly associated to um, carbon, carbon dioxide. Because they're seeing this. There's the red is the solar irradiance. That's how much stuff is coming out of the sun towards us. And it's maybe growing a little bit. It's but not like the heat that's collecting on the earth. You see, this is the heat. It's going straight up. These are the number of years, and this is only till 2000. And in about 2000, things started to take off pretty good. Well, you're going to reach a saturation level around the Earth. And I think around the year 2000, it's saturated. It's just, it just can't accept anymore. So now they ha can't leave. So now it heats, and it will heat and heat and heat and heat nothing you can do it's just like having a pot of water on a stove and it, it's got the, the cover on it they, they, they can't get out it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and then it boils all right i just did this one about uh cern and their work using big particles big um protons smashing them into each other creating thousands and thousands of particles we only create one but they're identical to what CERN does and uh, I show this it's only a four minute video you should watch it okay hello my friends today I'm going to make this real quick CERN has proven electron flood theory they use particles that are 8,000 times bigger than the particles we use however they make the exact same patterns and that's because no there is no um, neutrons and protons the way they think of them. There is only positive trons and electrons. Same size, they're both this size, 0 0.00545 atomic mass, about that. And they're ones plus, ones minus. There is a ball of positives and minuses in the nucleus. And they just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's what these elements are made out of. And at certain frequencies, they stabilize. It's called resonance. Outside of those frequencies, if there's too many or not enough, they fall off and they decay. All right, now, this is called a snowball. It's a snowball nucleus. The electrons are always coating the snowball. There's always negatives on the outside. All right, I will leave it at this because um, you can watch this whole thing. But the key to this is that the exterior here is just nothing but electrons. The positives and negatives are in the core, but then additional st strictly electrons come to try to flood. We know those. They stay in the orbitals. These are the things that fly off of particles, of, of, of atoms and molecules. These are the things that fly off as light. Sometimes maybe bigger chunks will fly off in the form of ultraviolet and gamma rays and x-rays but they're going to be particles that are flying off of here and only a couple of them will fly off until you get really serious nuclear explosions so in in a general life that we live in in outer space and so forth you you're just going to get one or two of these flying off so you're going to get your your red light you know your long frequency light and then you're going to go into your greens and blues and so forth but Primarily, they're going to be electrons, and they are going to be coming from the sun to us. There's no other way to look at it. They're particles. They're particles. 
Well, guess what? Those are the dark energy and the dark matter they've been looking for. They weigh 0 0.00055 atomic mass units, and they flood the universe. So your 63% of the universe just showed up.